it's a Wednesday, which means you're about to watch us drink six more wines, not knowing what they are, try and identify what they are, how much we pay for them, and how much many bottles, how many, how many bottles we'd buy. Um, big thanks as always to Different Drops sorting us out. And we've got a special bracket this week. The bracket is Different Drops Cellar. So I'd imagine this means that these wines have probably been sticking around somewhere for a little while. So they might have a little bit of age on them, which is really exciting for me. Especially with big red wines. I find that we drink them too young a lot on this show. And I'm just like, yeah, tannin, hasn't opened up at all. So hopefully these have opened up a little bit. Also, um, I think this is still available. Your Magic 38. If you want to go buy yourself a bottle of uh, this stuff, which we've got fermenting on the back bar at the moment, which I probably wouldn't recommend drinking it after four weeks sitting on a shelf upstairs in an Adelaide Hills winery, but you know, give it a whirl. Find out for yourself. But wine number one. Wine number one looks like a nice kind of yellowy, golden, pale golden kind of number, but there's a little bit, it looks like there's a bit of fizz in there. It looks like there's some beard or bubbles. Oh, wow. Yeah, fantastic uh, nose and aroma. Brioche, straight away. You can easily see a great amount of primary fruit. I'm kind of already thinking this is Australian. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's one of those ones where I think it's a really high quality wine. I think it's very well made, and I think it's made for someone mm. other than this guy. Well, there's some, definitely some fizz in there. And by golly, is it yummy. It's like, it's clean. It's got this lovely kind of mineral thing. There's great textural uh, element. There's a little bit of sugar in here as well, which is very true to the style. But it's got this lovely texture, bright zingy acid. Bright, zi <laughs> bright zingy acid. Amazing length, toasty brioche. I know only the Australian viewers of this are really gonna understand and appreciate this, but there is like a sense of nostalgic joy when I uh, taste like really sort of autolytic uh, sparkling wines because they taste like Vegemite. Um, free cheap, free, free cheap French champers. I'm gonna say that that is 60 bucks a bottle. This is like a good kind of mid-level champagne. It's not, it's not like mum. It's kind of above that Paul Roger spec, but it's not like Cristal or something stupid like that. It's just fucking delicious. Yum, yum, yum. All right, wine number two, we've got uh, something that looks very watery. Um, I actually enjoy seeing wines that like, I say water like it's a denigration of the wine. It's not, it's actually just, it's very pretty, very bright, very vibrant. It doesn't jump out at me a lot. There is some sort of like nice aged notes, some nice woods, some nice cork. I don't know, it feels like this wine's been kept under cork rather than under screw cap. This feels like really great semillon. It's got that kind of texture that I don't think Riesling often has. And that kind of, it's not quite like that kerosene petroleum thing, but it is that like, like really high acid age character still there. Interesting, interesting. Really amazing waxy texture. Now I'm sort of hinting towards Fiano and this is kind of like relative spectrum. Uh, there is a thickness to it that kind of also emphasizes this mutedness. It's kind of like a li just a little bit quiet. Oh yeah. Oh, that's very good. Oh, that's very good wine. You're very good. I reckon that's going to be, I don't know, I reckon when you bought it at the time, it probably would have been like $38, $40, but I'm thinking now that it's been selling and there's less of it left, maybe it's a little bit more expensive. So we'll call that 50 bucks. It's going to be interesting to see how far this goes. This could also be Semillon, and I know different drops based in New South Wales, so there's definitely a really good uh, chance that it could be Hunter Valley Semillon, which is a, great, a, a wine style that I really, really love. It's like a good wine. It's going to be a good wine. It's going to take a long time, and I'm glad this is sitting in the, in the cellar, but it needs to remain in the cellar for now. Uh, and I would happily pay um, like 32 bucks a bottle and I would totally buy, I'll probably buy six because I'm like, I don't know whether it's going to actually improve necessarily. I kind of get a hint that it will. I don't know to what extent it's going to improve because right now it's really kind of hard to see sort of the heritage of the grape variety or, or the place at the moment. So very quiet, very well made wine. Though. Wine number three, very yellow, very gold. That's beautiful. Definitely got some richness there, for sure. Looking really cool. Really like savory and herbaceous. Got some really lovely florals going on. Lots of frangipani and white flowers. Elderflower, bright and delicious. Honeycomb. Great, brilliant, fantastic. And I think we're starting to get to this, a testament to Elevage, maturation in bottle. These are skin contact wines, like red wines. They're skin contact wines. They need time in the cellar. This is an orange wine. It's a skin contact wine. It needs time in the cellar. And it looks pristine, it looks elegant, it looks pretty, it looks so much better for it. Texture's really lovely, really food friendly, lovely phenolic grip, and is that kind of orange wine thing. I'm not exactly sure what this is. Would happily part with magic number 38. I wrote down 40, so I do kind of feel that I would happily pay a little bit more for this, um, but 38, magic number, 12 bottles. Let's get some reds going, eh? We're at Dead Redemption time. Wine number four. Nice kind of star anise and cinnamon, cinnamony, nutmeg, spices, yum, 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 yum. 
Beautiful, full, rich palette, lovely tannin profile, fresh fruited still, but really starting to move into that more kind of savory element. Earthy mushroom characters really sticking out very, very well. Gorgeous, lovely wine. Needs a little bit more time, but at the moment it's got all sort of the makings of a pretty, pretty great wine. So there's not a hell of a lot of acidity, like there is, it's present, it's there. It's probably a little bit more than I would associate with Grenache, to be honest. Dude, that's a banger. $12, $45. It's like, oh yeah. Uh, something like that. I think it's got that kind of influence, but um, definitely really cool and very delicious. Someone who gives you a glass of this, you're just gonna be like, yeah, delicious. Like it's got that lovely depth and richness to it as well for a Pinot Noir, but. Whole bunch and stem or a few other sort of more fruit-based processes rather than the sort of winemaking artifice. Pinot, fuck it. Pinot Noir. One number five. <laughs> All right, wine number five, deeper, darker, and browner. We have brown, all right. I knew this was breakfast wine, but I didn't think we'd be getting morning brown. Morning brown, morning brown. Have yourself a cup of morning brown. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, it's like big boy wine is what this smells like. But it's like what I was talking about at the top where it's like aged big boy wine, so it's actually unwound a little bit. Oh yeah, that tannin profile is so, ripe and broad and smooth. Great structure, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, really lovely Cab Sab, I reckon here. Yeah, um, I would pay, mm, I mean, look, there's age, tannin is svelte, which is rare, but that really speaks more to the age rather than the variety, giving me a lot of varietal characters of a Cabernet or Cabernet blend. Mm. And like peppery and red fruity and all of those things that I'm looking for in a more medium plus to heavy red wine. I'm gonna go Margs. It's got some Margs energy, get 12. This will, this has got freshness to it. I reckon this will keep for another decade plus. Really great example actually, I think of this wine in the drinking window. What we, when we talk about drinking window, this is sort of like mid to late. I kind of wouldn't want to see it older. Again, faded brown rim but nowhere near quite as much. Oh, yeah, okay, maybe this is caps up. Um, this is definitely stemmy and, okay, I'm gonna, yeah, that, that's, I'm gonna change that. That's definitely like Syrah. The back olive tapenade thing's gonna send me down the path of Merlot, but I still think it's Syrah, lower acidity. Really, really beautiful wine. Uh, I would happily pay like $55 a bottle for that and I would buy 12 and it is in the drinking window now. That's pretty cool, that's not bad. I'll have three. 40 baht, I call it Cabernet. Oh shit, almost knocked the glass over. In my white knit of all things, no, no, no. This is why you can age Cab Sab forever, because it's got this lovely, beautiful, zingy fresh fruit and lovely acid. But those kind of tertiary characters are really popping out as well. The stems here are lignified. Uh, vegetalness about it. it, it's like a tobacco um, cedar. Uh, fun bit that I've decided I'm doing from now on, I'm no longer calling it Cabernet, I'm now calling it Cabaret, because Cabaret Festival's coming up and I love a little bit of live music with candle. Yum, really, really good. Oh fuck, what a ripper lineup. Uh, thanks, Stephen Drop Boys. Uh, that is an excellent little treat. I'm going back to that champagne, uh, just because it's the best. <sighs> All of these in varying degrees. Very, very delicious. Uh, let's see what the other drinks think. Alrighty, uh, we got six more wines, fellas, and these were fun. I had a really good time with this lineup. Uh, I thought there was some interesting shit. I thought there was some stuff that might have been from the different drop cellar. Mm. Yeah. So. It if, if this is the different drop seller, I want to come to their staff parties every mm. year. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I think such a interesting, like just an interesting premise for the bracket yeah. as well. I also didn't, I, I'm not sure what, how wines end up in the cellar. Mm. Like, is it like a conscious decision? This is a wine, you know, or is it an allocation? Or is it like, fuck, we, got we over yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is this is like, yeah. how turns most wineries like, are like, with museums we, yeah, stock? We check the staff purchases, like, turns out our staff really like this. We better keep an extra couple of cases of gist, this for us, yada yada, Christmas party, bang, bang, bang. 100%. Yeah, I very much approached it of the mind that they were like, these are wines that we like, and we want to see what they look like in a little while, as opposed to like, oh, we can't sell this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Dude. Best, Epic. Bubbles. Best, best wine to taste to start of the day. Oh, like, totally. Honestly. Hundred percent. Friggin' go, yum. Oh, it smells oh, it's like, like honey now. Yeah, mm. boy, it's so fucking good. It's really. It smells really like kind of wheat bix as well. Yeah, it's, like, it's a it's elite champagne. It is just elite champagne. Do you guys ever get this nostalgic thing about? like tasting sparkling wine and tasting Vegemite? No. No, uh, it's not quite Vegemite yet, but I know what you're talking yeah. about. I know what you're yeah. talking about, that yeasty, like that yeasty thing, but it like gets it. further past it. But I don't think it's at that Vegemite stage there, but I think it's almost there. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, so did I. I, I thought it was cracking. I was so close to being on the same page with you guys, and I was just like, I reckon this is champagne. Mm -hmm. I reckon it's cheap French champagne. I reckon it's Aussie, and I reckon oh, it's a slightly warmer climate. Uh, and I was like either like, 
Victorian or Adelaide Hills. Potentially Margaret River. Perfect. It's also, wait, uh, I, I tasted first. It's also much nicer now. Mm. We topped it up. Yeah, okay. we topped it up because it was flat when I was drinking and I was like, look, can we get some beers? And it, it made the wine so Oh, so he chopped it up better. for you. Well, you chopped it up for me. Yeah, we so, yeah. <laughs> so we've had a lot of champagne this morning. Dude, every, <laughs> every time I come in with the champagne flat, I just drink flat champagne. You guys are getting top ups? God fucking damn. Did you ask? No. <laughs> three years, guys. I don't think we were allowed years. to. <laughs> Holy shit, that changes literally every. Everything. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was 60 bucks and I wanted three bottles of it. I wanted 12 for 75. 60 and 12? How much? Hey! Yay. Appropriately priced, I think. Yeah, yeah. definitely like premium. Expensive bubbles. It's definitely premium. Yeah. Champagne. Champagne. No, Tazzy! Stefano Lubiana. Lubiana. Grand Vintage. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, That's man. very good. I mean, one of the great cool. growers in Tassie, um, one of the great producers, uh, and one of the great styles from Tassie. This Little Christmas beetle on there. 2011. That's that's 13 years old and fresh as a daisy. That's going to develop so fucking well. That's, that's epic. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's like really good wine. That's next level. Yeah, really, really. And of 2011 as well, not necessarily known on the East Coast as being one of the best vintages. Very exceptionally wet vintage. But yeah. when you're in Tassie and you deal with wet vintages literally every year, you obviously... <gasps> another day, another dollar. Yeah, yeah. but also you can get it off the vine quicker. Yeah. So yeah. it's like when you're making these style of wine, so they're super lean. Uh, this, this is cool. I fucking love this. Yeah, I got a dozen dope. of it. I got a dozen of this too. It's dope. I got six. <laughs> oh, the half a dozen is still pretty good. Oh, this is very, very good. I, I love the wine, really well made. Tastes better than it smells. It smells a little bit like... Um, Start the car. Like stale taxi. Kerosene. Yeah, it's got that age to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah like there's yeah. an LPG tank sitting like literally 30 centimetres behind yeah, you in the boot. You got some two-stroke yeah. here. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm, I, I love the smell of two-stroke in the morning. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's great. Uh, this is good old Hunter Valley Semillon, I reckon. Ah, uh, Semillon. It is too. Yes, yeah, it's 100%. Yeah, you've got to go with the different droppers yeah. Based in New South Wales, yeah. Uh, so you got to go with the bias. Um, you know, Hunter Valley's an hour and a half, two hours drive away, yeah, and this is, is fucking. I, I love this style, and you know, you could get twelve. I don't think this is like Vat One or like top shelf stuff. No, I think this is you know good value. Just get a dozen of it, no matter what, because Fuck. you could forget about this wine for thirty years. Open it up; it's all under screw cap. It'll be delicious, guaranteed. One hundred percent. That's exactly what it is. Um, I wanted six. I thought it was really well made. I just a little bit thin on the palate. I was just kind of like. Oh. It's in that Casper zone. Casper. That's yeah, exactly where it give is. It, give it another five. Are going to be Ripper? Yeah. Hey, uh, I think it's worth 12 because I know what it was and what it can be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but again, I reckon this is about 40 bucks, so just get a dozen bucket. Yeah. 32 and 6. 12 for 50. Uh, I thought it was 2017 vintage. Oh, oh this yeah, is that one. Fuck. <laughs> okay, it's been real Casper. It's real Casper. <laughs> 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 That one. Yeah. <laughs> what year is it? 2017! Ah! So just like, this is that magic. Like, they yeah. just, they don't die. That's, that's, that's six years old? Yeah. Seven. Or seven years old. Seven, seven. years old. Seven yeah. years old. Yeah. Look at that. It looks, it looks honestly fresh vintage. Yeah. yeah. This is that, that sort of, yeah, wow. <laughs> this is one of those sentences that like, if it gets taken out of context where all of a sudden we're not talking about wine, we're talking about children. It's like seven years old and it hasn't died. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 is, it, is, it, is it the year 1480 and <laughs> yeah. cholera hasn't oh my been God. vaccinated yeah. yet? Oh my, oh my God. God. Made it to grown up teeth. Amazing. Also just massive respect to just like metals. Yeah. 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 I haven't yeah. seen that, ma that many uh, I metals I'm, since the 25th of April. I know. Honestly, <laughs> dude, I um, I don't think Tyrrell's that one needs medals to sell. I no, just, I yeah, just, just call it that one. It's Michael, so... Michael Phelps of one. Yeah, hey, fuck me. Right, uh, yes. Cool, little buddy. Up next. Uh, oh no, sorry. This is Vidello. Uh, <laughs> the fuck, this is Vidello? No, it's, it's not. not but, high like, alcohol, but it's it's like I don't know, this man. is also in a Casper spot. Oh, yeah. This is always. I think this is almost like getting potentially Pretty. reasonably interesting. Yeah. Like aromatically, it's awesome, but I just don't think it has enough of that kind of tertiary age character that you mm. want from the start. I think it's got a little bit to go. You know the. You know when you haven't shaken tomato sauce properly and that little watery bit comes out first. Oh yeah. Smell that. Oh my fucking it's tomato god. Leaf. Oh my god, that's Dude. hilarious! It's tomato leaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. god, that is so accurate. It's so <laughs> that is like a really high I haven't done one in a while. I have no idea what it was. Like, again. Uh, it feels dorm alone -y. Um like, Ah, no, nah, she doesn't make anything that weird. It's not, it's not, and she, only her orange wines are really youthful. Oh. Like, mm. 
That's very pretty. It's like cherry blossom. What is? Almost. It's like it's. This is what's happening with orange wine. Is like they're getting used to like elevages being a thing, but they're also just a little bit more elegant. Mm, they're yeah. a little bit more finessed, and this is like a classic example of that. And it just needs a bit more time to sell it. It'd be yeah. great. It almost feels like even in the years that we've been doing this show, orange wine has gone from uh, so to sell an orange wine, it just has to be an orange wine because mm -hmm. that's the thing that separates it from all the other wines. Whereas mm. now, so many people are making them and actually learning how to make them well that it's like here's an orange wine that does this. Here's an orange wine that does that. And Correct. it feels like, maybe I'm just learning more about it. It's probably been yep. the case for no, a long time. I think, I, think, I, I think it's really, really quite an accurate way to describe how winemakers are approaching it now. Well, this one, I thought magic number and I wanted 12. Mm. Uh, I was half a dozen for 55. Half a dozen for 30. Oh, this is nice. nice. Yeah, well, it's yeah. a tazzy. Yeah. Um, this is a big bottle. Hefty. Uh, Alpine Valley. Oh, Vic. And Vic, yeah. So this is Glenn, uh, Glenn, 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 um, who, uh, as well as... Oh, Joe, Joe Marsh. Yep. Um, so this is their sort of joint project. Uh, we were actually out at Penfold. Mm -hmm. Those Amphoras. Yeah. Yep. Remember the whole story yeah, about yeah, those Amphoras? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it started. This cool. is that wine. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. it's a Fiano. Is that what you're telling me? Yes, this is Fiano. Vermentino Fiano blend. Vermentino. Yeah. Ah, that's how you pronounce Fidello. Um. <laughs> <laughs> It's cool good. Wine. I like very, it a lot. Very yeah, cool yeah, wine. Very nice. like one of the yeah, main sort of I think more of time on this is going to give it better. Yeah. I think, yeah, that can develop so, so well. Oh, it's <laughs> gone. Where's my thumb gone, dude? <laughs> this is the beauty of having a really deep punt. Dude, that's... They call this punting. Yeah, dude, that's insane. That is so deep. I mean, you punt a little bit differently than I do, but you know, like, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty good, that's... yeah. All right, uh, wine number four. I've got no idea what Pinot Noir is anymore, but I called this Pinot this because... Pinot Noir. Hey! I think, mm, at least. Mm, 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 like, like, there is a vibe that it could mm. be Grenache, but it is quite ripe. Yeah. But there's, a, there's a good, healthy slashing of oak here that I think was just, like, for me personally, a little bit too much oak for me, mm. uh, but rich and ripe and more that kind of, like, full-bodied yeah. style of Pinot. But again, more time will do better. Do this thing better. Yeah, I was really into this. I wanted a dozen of this. This is probably my favorite wine in the lineup. Um, I thought it tasted like cherry ripes, like that sort of really rich yep. chocolate. Yeah, cherry ripe was my call on it as well. And that's yeah. why I actually went Grenache with it, um, just because like the oak. Mm. I was just yeah. like, wow, it was like thrown out. Is either fuck the Pinot? Sorry, man. <laughs> like. <laughs> Pinot just can't, like, Pinot can swallow oak really well. I'm not sure if that's even French. Like, it's really coconutty. It's really, like, that's that desiccated coconut, cherry, cherry rap, right, dark, dude, chocolate, you know? And so I was like, ah, oh, it feels like an ash, but... I, yeah, I went six for 60 because I know this is a really good mm. quality wine, um, mm. but it's not, like, if it's Pinot Noir, I like that lighter, prettier, yeah. like, more elegant, like, high tone style, whereas mm. this one's a little bit more, yeah, that's, it's... it's it's fuller bodied, uh, but it kind of reminded me of like Macedon stuff. I went 38 and three, and that was more like how much I would pay. It's, uh, it feels like Yangara. Mm. Um, and Yangara is not this liberal with oak. Mm. Yeah, yeah, which kind of has me in a spin. I want a dozen for 45. I love cherry ripes. Uh, how much was it? Grenache. 1850, the oldest yeah, the Grenache oldest vines in the yeah, world. And American oak, which yeah. explains. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but oldest, uh, yeah, Marco Cirillo. Amazing uh, winemaker, amazing uh, tender of these these vines as well. Like he tends these uh, ancestor vines incredibly well. And of course, it's kind of part of the style. Like his style has always been to be pretty heavy handed with oak. Mm. So it all checks out, but it is one of those rarity things. You just can't get this, 1850. This is plant. history. Yeah. This is absolute yeah. history. And for $70 of the oldest Grenache vines in the world, and that's 2017 and it needs more time. It needs more time. Yeah. Like, dude, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17, 17 11. 17. Yeah. I'm actually going to an event this weekend called Grenache Fest, and you best believe I'm going to be talking about how I was drinking that earlier <laughs> in the week. All right. Yeah. Uh, wine number five, Shiraz. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I immediately went, I immediately went Cab Sav, but then after trying the last one, I was like, oh, no, 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 that's the other one. That I think this could be like Hunter Syrah. Dude, I went similar. Cabernet, and then I went Syrah for that. Oh, uh, I've, I've flipped that. Yeah, I've flipped that as well. Yeah. I think that's too peppery for. Syrah. Syrah. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I think this is Syrah. Um, oh God, that's good. That's it's, so I re good. I really love both of these wines, to be frank. But They're yeah, really I, good. I went, a, I went a dozen for 70 for this. I was, yeah, I only need six of them just because like... Uh, it's fair, probably fair enough. Yeah, I just don't need a dozen of these wines, but they're sick. They're but this will, keep yeah. for, this will keep forever. This yeah, will yeah, keep yeah, forever. Yeah. Like this has got so much time left in it. Uh, pick the year, Faded Brown Rim. What year was this 2017. one? 2017. 2017? I'm going to go 2013. 2013? I'll go 2015 in the middle of year two. Uh, I also thought it was 30 bucks. I thought 36 and I wanted six. Lucky? <laughs> KT! Cabernet? What about Cabernet? Cabernet. Well done, 16. Well done. 2016. Middle of both yeah. of us. 
Clear Valley, underrated as well. Just underrated um, Cabernet. A lot of people jump straight to Oh, it was Cabernet? Wine. Yeah, it was yep. Cabernet. Fuck. But that's, yeah, yeah that, like, that's not quite as like, um, from the uh, Churunga Vineyard, which is one of the best vineyards in Australia. So cool. Mm. Um, but this is not as quite as herbaceous and eucalyptus-y as mm. I generally expect. Clear Valley mm. Cabernet. I don't, I don't know if that's an age thing, but that's awesome. Could also be a KT thing. She's yeah. just a bit of a whip. She's like, the she fucking, just does, yeah. she, she is probably one of the Jet. most like sneaks under the radar winemakers in Australia. That Melva Riesling. Oh, the, all the Jesus Rieslings man. are crazy. Next level. So, so good. I know that just as you've mentioned that, I was smelling it and you said not that much eucalyptus. Give me there's a fair bit of fucking eucalypt in there. And wine number six. Uh, I've decided I'm not going to call things Cabernet anymore. I'm going to start calling them Cabaret because I think it's fun. Um, so I call this a Cabaret. I'm glad someone thinks it's fun. I can't, I, honestly, <laughs> the thing that I jump straight to in my head, I just can't get out of it, is um, the uh, panel Syrah. Is the, mm. is the, the stemmy panel Syrah. And it's just like, it's kind of I know they great. did. You, I know they did the re-release of that recently. Oh, did they? Yeah. Uh, they did the re-release of the Jimmy Watson Syrah. Yeah, I, that's the where I went straight to. It's, it's got Tano that olive black olive tapenade, yeah. and he does sort of this fifteen percent whole bunch lignified stems. Mm -hmm. and that's that cedar box, white pepper, beefy on the palate. Yeah, well, bacon, fat. Yeah, bacon fat, bacon yeah. fat. Yeah, I I loved it. I, I loved both of these wines. Uh, twelve yeah. for seventy. Uh, three for forty. I preferred that one. Shame. Uh, Fifty-five and twelve. My wine alone. Wow. Oh, Jamsy. Yes, Syrah, Yo, Jam that's sheet. It. fucking excellent. Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Yo, that's a twelve year old wine. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. And it's not dead. Thank you so much for opening up your cellar to this different drop. Uh, these are that's sick. That's awesome. They, these are sick. I absolutely adore this. So like so, that's uh, you said one hundred and twenty. Would would that have been going? How much would that have been in twenty twelve? I don't uh, know, like forty bucks. Forty fifty bucks. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm. Starting to do it. I'm starting to buy like wines now and keeping them for a while. I think you should. Like, I think you should. Big reds, especially like so. Semillon, yeah. big reds, even some like Chardonnays. Rieslings, tuck Rieslings. Them away. Yeah, Re Cheap Riesling, 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 Sam. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I most of my cellar is red. Yeah, mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. because I end up drinking the wines straight away. <laughs> because like these wines, if we'd been drinking them in 2012 and 2015, like there's no way that I would have been like dozens and yeah. sixes yeah. because they just need that time to fucking chill out, mate. Like just relax. Relax, brother, and they're so good now. They're all awesome. Like, this is a ripper lineup. This is yeah. absolutely Probably outstanding. Probably one of the strongest lineups we've had yeah. uh, all year so far. Yeah, well, it's been appropriately sellered, as it turns out. Uh, so, what was one of the lineup? I'm putting my foot forward for Jam Sheet. I think that's really I'm happy to go with Jam Sheet. 12, as well. 12 year old Syrah that looks like that, that could be a slice out of the Rhone. Yeah, uh, no, that's 100%. Really yeah, like, like even Herbe Suez. Like, you know, it's got some herbaceous so vibes. Yeah, yeah, totally, 100%. Uh, you know what's throughout. great about this is that winery is around the corner from my house in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> the cellar door is in Preston, uh, which is great. So I'm going to go there. Can we get some mates rates, some local rates? Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm in the same postcode, 3072, what up? 3072. <laughs> All right, shit. Uh, until next time, buy a young wine, put it in your shed, make an old wine. That'll be fun. Catch you guys. <laughs> Do you know what?